but you watch so many videos trying to improve your chest, then you feel so motivated, you start playing one game, another one, and you lose, and you lose again, and so you feel so frustrated. The problem is, you don't have a map to connect it all together. Today, I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need to pay attention to from the very beginning of the game till the very end, so that you can play a great game of chess. What's up chess player and welcome to the journey to get master of the place where you can improve every single aspect of your chess game. So I have played this very strategic chess game as white in the Grand K Chess Open, the biggest tournament in the entire chess world. Magnus Carlsen was there, Dino Rand was there, so many top grandmasters like Hans Niemann has won this open tournament and I was somewhere there sitting in the middle trying to uh, find myself to the top. I was playing as white and I desperately needed to win that game. So I started to be as active as possible. This is what you are trying to do, especially if you're playing as white. You want to be active because you want to take advantage of this extra move that you have from the very beginning of the game. There are two main things you absolutely must focus on from the very beginning of the game. The first one is the center. The center of the board is the most important part of the game. There is a small center here, the four squares, and there is a big center here, 16 squares. And it's very important to, well, keep a close eye to what ha what's happening there, because who controls the central controls the world. So I'm playing knight to f3. This is the first thing you need to focus on. And the second one is the development. You should religiously focus on your development. You need to bring all of your pieces into the board, like you need to bring all of your forces into the battlefield. If you don't do that, if you're just playing with a bunch of your pieces, it's like you have a very intelligent brain, you're a genius, but you are sitting there the whole day on the sofa because you are too lazy to use it. It's not the efficient way. So our task is to bring all of our pieces into the battlefield. How do we do that? Well, we use the golden principle. One piece, one move. This way you ensure that you bring all of your pieces into the game as fast as possible. And very important to also find the most active squares for it, so you are fully optimized and fully ready for the game that is coming. Let's see how I did it in this game. My opponent plays b6, I'm playing c4 because I want to get more control of the center, e6. Now I'm playing the move a3. This is a very tricky move because otherwise my opponent would play bishop to b4 after knight c3 and would be pretty active. By the way, I knew him before the game. I knew that he's a very tactical type of a guy. So I really wanted to limit his potential. I wanted to get a better position for me, but a boring one for him so that he doesn't have those uh, attacking opportunities. Like psychology plays such a huge role in chess, especially if you know who you are playing against, you really need to use that to your advantage. Like a typical example, if you are playing against a very young talent who is very sharp in tactics, obviously he's young and energetic, he likes crazy, crazy positions, then you need to make the game as boring as possible. Vice versa, if you are playing against a very experienced, like 50 years old guy, you need to just burn the board in tactics to make it like absolutely crazy to handle for him. This is of course just a generic example, but you get the idea. Psychology plays a huge role in chess because, well, it's sports like everything else. a3, my opponent plays bishop to b7, now I'm free to develop my knight, knight to c3, and my opponent cannot develop the bishop to the desirable square of b4, so he plays bishop to e7. The problem is, it's not that active. So now, white has a lot of active opportunities. The main one, the most active one, is to play the move d5. And this is the best move, just grabbing the full control of the center. Unfortunately, I somehow didn't play it. I played the move queen to c2, preparing the move e4. But just know that if you can grab the full control of, of the center and your opponent cannot really do about that, this is already a huge achievement because your opponent has much less opportunities. And this is, by the way, the main goal you should have in chess to make your opponent's life as miserable as possible. Chess is a very brutal game. So you need to make it hard for your opponent to handle. Now, before we continue, a quick reminder, there is a huge sale on my 10-day opening mastery uh, course, which is allowing you to build a complete and holistic lifetime opening repertoire in just 10 days. I mean, it's insane. It's at the price of just one opening course. Nobody else is offering anything like that. 
you also get to apply it practically immediately. We don't focus on these long theoretical variations like most of the courses out there are that are for like grandmasters. Like for me, I like those courses because it allows me to prepare against very, very strong players. But you, on like 1500 level, you never get those positions. It's not useful for you. But we can specifically focus on the positions you really get in your games and you can use what we are learning immediately in your game. Now, there are almost a hundred of practical puzzles to help you use the knowledge you have just learned. There are more than 100 pure value video tutorials to help you explain in depth the ideas you need to get a perfect position out of the opening. This course is basically your shortcut to forgetting all of the opening pain once and for all. And this is an absolutely risk-free small investment into your chess education, because if you are not happy for any reason, you can get your money back, no question asked, 100% inside of our seven day money back guarantee. So before it's too late, visit the website, uh, look at what people are saying about the course, take a look at it yourself because there are free tutorials, no registration needed, just take a look and decide whether it's something for you or not. Take a look at the review from also Chess, respected chess YouTube channel where he goes dive deep into what makes this course special. 10 day opening mastery. My opponent plays d5, he wants to finally fight for the center, that's good. But I'm taken here on d5, and this this is the problem about this bishop on b7. After the exchange, the bishop is somehow blocked by this pawn, and this is not so great. I'm just playing the move bishop to f4, all of my pieces have potential to have very active squares. But this is your only goal for the opening, you don't need anything else, just two things. Focus on the center and develop all of your pieces. Now, my opponent plays the move c6. I'm not really a big fan of it. It feels rather passive for me because it's blocking the bishop. But I assume his idea was to deal with the seven, c7 pawn problem. Anyway, I'm just playing h3. This move, like, I just want to save my bishop. Never believe anyone who tells you that bishop and knight are just equal. This this is so untrue. In most of the situation, bishop is stronger than the knight. So never allow your opponent just to exchange the knight for for a bishop without getting anything in response and never exchange it yourself if if you don't have a very very good reason to do that so i'm playing h3 just to make sure that if my opponent plays knight h5 i have this square on h2 at my disposal my opponent plays castles i go e3 he goes knight b to g7 so absolutely nothing special this is high chance that something like that you can get in your game and you don't need like to be very creative. Chess, at least in the opening stage, is pretty simple. If you focus on the right things, you're not going to get into trouble. Now, my opponent plays rook to e8. And the next step, like this late opening or early middle game, it's very important to understand what you're about to do in the game. And this is where it becomes more complicated. This is what distinguishes a strong chess player from an intermediate one. A strong chess player always thinks about the plan, like what we want to do in the game. Whether we want to attack on the queen side, I don't know, create some weaknesses there, or we want to break through in the center, blow up the center and then use that to our advantage. Or we want to attack on the king side. What should be the plan? Because it's really very helpful because once you understand the general plan, the general strategy, it's much simpler for you to find the concrete moves, like the concrete steps to achieve that goal. I decided that in this game, I'm going to be more active because I have this space advantage. I really want to use it. So there is this plan in the Queen's Gambit to attack on the king side. You basically just go uh, along castles. Your king is relatively secure there and you go all in into the attack on the king side. So I wasn't bluffing. I knew that this exists. Also, of course, I could have just continued the game normally with short castles and, and playing in the center. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I felt I have the advantage. I should use it somehow. And I was anticipating my opponent playing c5 because it's like the golden strategic principle. If your opponent plays on the side, you should answer in the center. My opponent is, of course, very advanced player, so he knows that and he's playing c5. The problem is, it's like very difficult to create any problems for me. And meanwhile, I have this move knight to b5. I want to create problems for him, like knight c7 is already coming with a fork. This, this is very annoying. You avoid all of those problems. And you, by the way, cannot play rook to c8 because I just take knight takes a7 and you're in trouble. My opponent takes here on d4. And I'm taking it back. The problem is 
Now, my opponent has an isolated pawn here on d5, which is also in turn blocks that bishop on b7. This is like a very unfortunate situation for black in terms of strategy, because you have this bishop, which is pretty stupid, you have this isolated pawn, and I have this knight on d4, which is like a perfect blockader. If you can achieve that, if you can get your opponent to have isolated pawn, and then you can block it with your knight, this is like the best possible case scenario, because this knight is so active, not only it's blocking the pawn, but it's so active in the center of the board, it's just a perfect situation you can find yourself in. My opponent plays bishop to f8, he tries to somehow improve his pieces, well, his, he, the rook is active now, but I'm playing bishop c7 already, I'm starting to create some threats for my opponent, I'm starting to put some pressure, this is our main task for the entire game, we need to make the life as miserable as possible for our opponent. So this is exactly what I'm doing. The right move according to the engine is to play queen to e7, but it's like so scary after knight f5, you only have this queen to c5 move, and then knight d6 is coming. It's not something you would like to find yourself in. The engine might be able to find all of those moves, but as a human being, it's not simple at all. So my opponent plays queen to c8 instead, like trying to be as solid as possible, but this is the problem. So many low-rated players are doing that. Yes, you are solid, at least for the time being, but you are very passive. This is the main mistake my opponent is doing throughout the entire game. He is too passive. And this is why he never had any chances. I'm not saying I played a perfect game here. I made quite a few mistakes. But thanks to the fact that I was always more active, I was always having the initiative, I was always in the driver's seat, I was creating problems for my opponent, he could never get out of it. This is how you win a chess, constantly putting as much pressure on your opponent as possible. So of course it's time to finish my development, bring even more pieces, this rook is perfect on c1, my opponent plays knights to e4, and here I probably made one of the few mistakes in this game, I played the move bishop to f4 back. Normally you like never want to go back, it's like the golden rule from Bobby Fischer, just never go back. If you ever have a chance First, consider the moves forward, consider the active moves. Only if you absolutely have no ideas how you can go forward, then consider like any other moves and moves back. Well, I had an idea behind this move. I once again want to free this F7, C7 square sorry, and give a fork to my opponent's rooks and win some material. The right move is queen to d8 and somehow black still can handle it. But once again, very difficult task. My opponent decided, well, I'm having lack of space, so I'm gonna try to exchange as much stuff as possible. He's exchanging the rooks, and then he's also trying to exchange the rooks. Rook e to c8, he cannot go with the other rook to c8 because of the hanging a7 pawn. The problem is, I'm not allowing that. I'm playing knight to c7. So if you have space advantage, if you have the initiative, you don't want to that easily just exchange the pieces. Yes, we exchanged the queens, but all of the problems are the same. Black doesn't have enough space for all of the pieces, there is still this very stupid bishop, and there is this isolated pawn which I block so well, so there are no chances to get rid of it. Now the rook is hanging, my opponent plays rook to b8, I continue going forward and put pressure on my opponent, I play the move bishop to b5, improving my position, and it's very difficult to play knight c5 because there is b4. Once again, the same problem, you don't have enough space. And notice that I'm not giving any tactical opportunities to my opponent who has a very sharp tactical vision. Very important to use that to your advantage. Now I decided to transform my advantage, and even though the engine is like not a fan of it at all, it seemed very reasonable for me. Because I'm playing knight c6, I'm attacking the rook, my opponent takes it, and then I have a pair of bishops, at least for the time being. Now I know that my opponent can immediately get rid of it, this is exactly what he did, but I thought those exchanges they don't really help black because they still don't have any opportunities in, at all. So after knight to d6, I'm just playing bishop to a6, another move with a tempo, notice that I almost never give my opponent a free move. This is like a perfect situation to find yourself in. Always create those threats so that your opponent can't be proactive, he always must be reactive to, to what you are doing, so you are in the driver's seat, you dictate the terms. Now I just castled, finally it's time to make the castles, although the engine says I should have played king to e2 instead, but like 
I didn't want with those knights jumping around. I didn't want to leave my king in the center. It felt like here it should be more safe. So he played king to f8. And now I am playing rook to d1, just bringing my last piece into the game. Remember, that's our goal, to bring all of our pieces into the game. Remember, the first two steps were to focus on the center and to bring all of your pieces as fast as possible and as active as possible. Then we needed to figure out the plan. My plan was to attack on the king side eventually, but my opponent created some weaknesses in his camp, so I used that to my advantage. You never play alone. Always pay a very close attention to what your opponent is doing. You need to understand whether what he... First of all, you need to understand what he wants to achieve, then whether it's dangerous for you or not, and how you can use that to your advantage. So this is exactly what I did. Then you need to find the targets in your opponent's camp. And then you put as much pressure on it as possible. So the pawn is hanging right now. He plays knight to e4. I understood his idea is to play knight to c5. So always watch out for your opponent's opportunities. Like, as long as he makes a move, just forget about all of your plans for a second and think, okay, what does he want to achieve? I thought he wants to play knight c5 to get rid of this bishop, then his rook is free to go to c8. I want to stop it. So that is why I play the move b4 and just immediately stop it there. My opponent plays rook to d7. The engine is not a big fan of it either, but he wants to just double the rooks along the d file. This is a pretty reasonable idea, like the rook on b8 is doing absolutely nothing. I thought the knight is not doing anything useful anymore on the c7 square, so I really want to optimize it. I want to always find the most useful square for it. Here it attacks the a7 pawn and stops the d4 pawn. Always watch out what your opponent wants to do, because my opponent, of course, he would be happy. This would be just a dream for him to get rid of that isolated pawn and play d4. And as long as the knight is there, it's like never possible for him. I'm playing king to g2. Now, I just want to improve my position once again, step by step. I have no idea why the engine says it's a mistake. Seems like a very reasonable move. Just avoiding all of the checks to say, if I want to play f3, then all of the pawns are protected there. And the main problem is, my opponent is just still too passive. He cannot do anything active. He played the move knight e8, which is another move back. This is the main problem why he, uh, he never had any chances in this game. So at this point, I decided it's time for me to cash in. Like this second stage of the game is over, where I optimized everything the best possible way I could have. Now I'm ready to attack. Now the question is, how do I attack? How do I find the way to outplay my opponent and actually to use all of my advantage? Because right now the material is equal. Yes, I have more space, but I need to like quantify it. And to do that, of course, I start with the most active opportunities, as you should always do, which are checks, captures, threats, and active moves. Always fo follow this four-step system formula to find the best move in every possible position. If you do that, then you cannot miss these golden opportunities that you might not have every move. And you always need to use it not only for yourself, but also for your opponent when you calculate the variations. Because you think for yourself, okay, do I have any checks? Do I have any captures? Can I create a threat? And the same stuff you need to do for your opponent. Does he have any checks? Can he create any problems for my kid? Can he capture something? Can he create a threat? This way you avoid like 99% of the blunders, which decides the vast majority of the destiny of the games you play. Before I reveal to you the winning move here, I want to really say thank you to the sponsor of this video, the Chestnut Company, for providing this beautiful Chestnut Evo uh, for the purposes of this analysis, as well as all of uh, the training I am doing nowadays with Chess. I mean, it completely changed the experience I have. I so much like it. It saves like hours of time because I'm analyzing my games here. It saves everything into the uh, analysis. I can use it in every program I might use. For example, I like Lee Chess because you have everything you need in one place. Very convenient. You have the opening database. You have the Stockfish, of course just everything you need, but also the real board experience. This is very important because you don't get the same feeling if you're just analyzing on the screen. So I can sincerely recommend you it. They have a special offer right now. Use the special link in the description or Journey to Grandmaster coupon code to get a special discount. Let's find the winning move. I don't have any checks. I don't have any captures. Well, everything is protected. So how can I create threats? I can attack the rook on d7 and 
use this bishop which is not doing much. This is why I play the move bishop to c8. This is like the first step. My opponent doesn't have a lot of moves. In fact, this rook can only go to e7. But now I play bishop f5, and there are multiple problems for black. They have this isolated pawn, which is weak. They have this knight, which is under attack now. They have this a7 pawn, which is a weakness. So I'm basically threatening to take here. He takes back, and then I'm taking on a7. Then the big b6 pawn falls. So there is nothing you can do with so many threats. This is the problem. A lot of players are thinking, okay, as long as I'm solid and I protect all of my weaknesses, nothing bad can happen. But this is wrong, because your opponent is going to remaneuver the pieces back and forth, force him back, until he's going to just create so many threats for you that you cannot handle it. This is how it works. This is why it's so important to get your counterplay in chess. And unfortunately for my opponent, he didn't have any source of counterplay at all throughout the whole game. So, the knight is hanging, he played knight to f6, but now I play g5, I just want to win finally this pawn on d5, uh, I want, like, there is no good square for the knight to go, if you go to g7, I just take on d5, if you go to h5, the knight is very mi misplaced, to say the least, I have bishop g4, then take on h5, destroy your pawn structure completely when you play g6, and then pick up all of those weak pawns. My opponent played rook to e5, like finally making at least one active move in the game and creating one threat, but there was a nice tactical resource here, which unfortunately I haven't found, because for me, g takes f was enough. Feel free to pause the video for a second if you want to find it. This is the move f4. I'm just attacking this rook. If it goes back or takes the pawn, I'm just winning the knight. And if it takes, then suddenly this rook is completely in prison here on f5, and I just play knight e4 and pick it up for free, and afterwards there is a knight hanging still. So that would be an easy win. Instead, I just took here on f6. That was good enough for me, because after rook takes f5, I'm just taken there on g7 with a check. My opponent takes it with a king, and I'm achieving my goal. I'm taken there on a7. The whole pawn structure on the queen side collapses, and my opponent, well, finally got a few active moves towards the end of the game. I said, I don't believe your bluff. But he was like, okay, you can take all of my pawns, but I'm gonna create some threats for you. I have three attacking pieces. And this is something you should always be very careful. Doesn't matter if you think your position is completely winning or if it's much better. Always watch out for your opponent's counterplay. Like, never think, okay, the game is won, doesn't matter what I'm doing, I will always win. No. Current players, they have this tendency to find the opportunities, even if it seems like everything is over already. So, before your opponent stops the clock or just resigns, never lose the focus. Think about what he wants to achieve. Because if I allow my opponent to play something like knight e4, uh, king h8, rook takes f2, that would be almost a checkmate for me. So I have to be really careful and stop my opponent's counterplay. I have found a nice way to do that. I'm playing here the move f4, and this rook has no opportunities to go for it. It suddenly is completely passive. My opponent plays knight e4, and then I'm just stepping back to h2. No checks available, I'm threatening to play rook g1 and exchange a pair of rooks. Afterwards, the game is just done immediately. This is a very nice strategy and very simple one. If you have material advantage, in this case, two extra pawns, you always want to exchange as much stuff as possible, because it's making your task converting that material advantage into a full point much simpler. It's like you have 10 pieces if you count the pawns against 8 pieces. That would be 8. This is nice, this is a very good advantage. But if you exchange a bunch of stuff and you have just two pieces against zero, that would be a much better advantage. That would be all she wrote for your opponent. So, into h2, my opponent decided he doesn't want to exchange, he went back with a rook, but now I'm just bringing my knight back to the game. So, doesn't matter how many extra pieces you have, always try to use all of your pieces, not just a bunch of them. My opponent tried to somehow pin me, create some difficulties, but once again, I called his bluff, I don't believe in it, I'm just taking the third extra pawn, I don't care what he's doing. He played knight to c3, I came up with another tactic, rook to g5 check, you don't have a convenient way to step back with your king, he played king f8, but now I have knight to e5, once again I'm just exchanging those rooks, thanks to this tactical pin here, knight to g7. And my opponent even cannot get this e3 pawn, because he has to go to e7, and then um, it's blocking the rook here. So he plays king to f8 back, attacking the pawn again, but I'm just going back with the knight, I'm defending the pawn, he plays rook to e4, 
I defend it again. So I don't care. Okay, I have a lot of pawns. Yes, my opponent doesn't want to resign. So I just need to be careful with all of the threats he has. Place knight to d1. I go a4. I say, okay, if you want this pawn, you can get it. I'm gonna just push my connected passers and win the game. So this is exactly how you play a great game of chess step by step. You focus on the center from the very beginning. You bring all of your pieces into the field as fast as possible, as active as possible. Then you find out the plan. Very important step to understand where you are stronger in the game, where your opponent has some weaknesses, and then start building all of your game uh, towards this, uh, towards achieving this goal. But you don't want to rush, you don't want to just go all in and bluff your opponent. No, you want to improve your position step by step until you're fully ready, and then with the help of four steps system formula, find the best way to use your advantage. Throughout the whole process, you absolutely must watch out for your opponent's opportunities. Every time he makes a move, just forget about all of your plans and think for a second what he wants to achieve and whether it's dangerous for you. If you implement those steps, there is a very high chance you're going to play a very good game of chess and win so much after. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe to the channel to make my goal possible to get to the 10,000 subscribers in our amazing community Journey to God Master before the 1st of May, which is my birthday. Most of the viewers are unfortunately watching without subscribing to the channel. It's not really difficult for you, but it means the world to me, so I sincerely thank you for considering it. Now, I want to share with you something personal, the story of how I played against the current world junior chess champion. That was such an experience for me, the strongest classical chess opponent I have ever had. And I had a fantastic game with him. That was such a battle. Please take a look at it here. You're gonna learn so much as well as share these incredible feelings together with me.